Hey guys, so this is going to be the last part of the Fresh Prince of 40k. At least for the now. Yeah, for now. The last time the author wrote anything was the 28th of May this year, so, and he hasn't wrote anything since, so if he does write, we will continue on with this thread, but at the minute, this is the last part. So let's get into the video. Do you even know of Isha Monkey? 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 Likely more than you do, Eldar. He just looks confused now. I seem to have thrown him off. She still lives. Now he is really focused on me. Explain. He speaks with a tinge of feeling I can't place. She and the Laughing God escaped she who thirsts birth feast. How do you know this? I'm a nerd. I shrug and I say this. <laughs> <laughs> How do you explain this? He goes dead quiet. After a bit he takes a deep sigh. I felt your first meeting with the Imperium. It was as if the tapestry of fate was thrown into an inferno. The future broke. Shattered utterly when you looked into the sky and saw that ship. It was a big day. Indeed. Care to explain it? No, I'm good. He glares at me. Why is that? It is beyond your kind's understanding, Eldar. We humans have our own secret lore as well. God, I love being the other side of that. Eh, honestly, it must be good being able to outmaneuver an Eldar. Because mm -hmm. I just, you know, let's be honest, they're just sky we, yeah. they're sky we fuckers, let's be serious. <laughs> yeah. Eldrad just glares harder. What would your kind know that we would not? Don't talk down to me, Eldar. My people built our place in the universe. Yours didn't even discover fire on its own. I speak with venom on my lips. He just laughs. And we ruled the galaxy far before your kind left the dirt. What of it? He starts pacing and gesturing with his hands while grandstanding. I honestly tune most of it out and wait for him to actually get to the point. He keeps going. I eventually cut him off. What did you want to talk about, Xenos? I'm really sick of dealing with him by now. I will leave if you don't quickly get to your point, Eldrad. He turns back to me. Lorekeeper, how do you know what you know? I saw the future fracture into many possible fates because of you. He steps closer to me. I saw one future where your kind defaced our inheritance and claimed your lost glories. I saw the old foe claim you in the other. And the galaxy was not but a tomb. One in which the Imperium fell to ruin. The races of the galaxy rejoiced until they were devoured by the swarm. He keeps ranting off possible futures to me. I'm quickly getting done with this though. What do you want from me? I cut him off again. He just looks resigned now. The truth. He at least asked. Isha is held captive by the plague god. You need stairs in the warp. And that fucking clown cult has a secret craft world in the webway. It houses your race's complete records. I throw him the sack of soul stones. He catches them without effort. His gaze is even more confused now. I have him fully off guard. Don't bother trying to rescue Isha. You would fail in two ways. One is you get crushed by his demons. The other is she who thirsts would claim her after you somehow manage to rescue her. His face keeps changing as I give him a whiplash. You need might be corrupted. I don't know for sure. Keep an eye out. He goes even paler. A look of horror on his face. Also, the old ones didn't intend to grant you their shinies. Your ancestors looted it from their corpses. As I turn away to walk back to my group, I finish. We will send you the location of the other stones as agreed, once we are in our ships, of course. This felt like such a waste of time. Luckily, I was wearing a mic, so we have this whole rant for us to search through for anything useful later. I really can't stand Eldar. I don't think he really gained anything from that no. interview at all. I just feel like he just gave the Eldar information. What? Now, they would have had information, however, as I did say, he shattered the the current course of how history was going to yeah. be running. Yeah. Um, so there's really not anything but you can gain. But he gave him a lot of information and, there. Uh, well, it could actually backfire on him quite a bit. Uh, for you guys that don't know, um, Isha is the Eldar god of like, you know, health and all that shit. Nurgle's got her caption, captured. Pretty much Nurgle spends all day sitting brewing at his pot making new diseases like AIDS and Ebola yeah. and Kruna and whatnot. Nurgle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, he feeds it to her, um, Isha every day. So he does... Mm -hmm. Although, he sure actually manages to bless it to mortals in the mm -hmm. universe, so she does, through, like, divine intervention and shit. Yeah. It's actually quite interesting if you guys don't know. Check it out later. <laughs> Eldar Fag. <laughs> Ems seemed really pleased on the way back. I don't feel like we gained anything, but whatever. While we were gone, Mal found me a melee tutor. 
His name is Zahal. He is a used to be champion for hire, as in nobles would hire him to fight trial by combat as well as honour duels. Guy literally worked his way out of the lower hives to become a well regarded champion fighter. We've not started actual lessons, he's just had me trying different weapons and is taking notes. Angron has been spending time with Ferris, which is good. Horus went back to rejoin the crusade proper, and the Big E is planning to head out as well after Fulgrim and the Khan get here. I wouldn't mind getting to see more worlds. Sahal has been talking with Ferris and they decided I will learn sword fighting. Not because I have any talent for it, don't be silly, because Ferris is thinking a par sword is my best bet. Sahal has been drilling me daily and having me do sets to build muscle memory. Razitz keeps me drilled with CQC. See, see, close, <laughs> that, that, com close quarter a, combat, is that Yeah, like that's a Melgar solid. <laughs> <laughs> and knife fighting. Ence is going to send me to rep him at the Hive on Antarctica. <laughs> Big rep him, I'm going to be. Oh, <laughs> he told me he had the 8th Legion kick their shit in during unification. I think I kind of know about that. I hadn't known they had survivors, though. He let them rebuild, but refused to visit personally. Malkador told me the plan is to have them believe they have an in to the Emperor through me. They are on thin ice due to barely making minimum on tithe payments. My job is to try and get them on board fully or even just to contribute a bit more to the crusade. Imagine actually like Imagine having to pay taxes to God. <laughs> imagine 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 the Emperor being working for the IRS. Like actually he coming and knock, fucking knock. Knock, <laughs> knock knock bitch. <laughs> the fuckers snubbed me hard. My group had to wait an hour for our greeting party. The governor refused my handshake. At the party, his daughter insulted me as a feral world, <laughs> feral worlder during my required dance with her, and they charged me for my grip's food. What? What are these idiots thinking? They even made us rent apartments for the night as they impounded our ship. We tried to peacefully get our ship back, but they wanted a huge price. My grip raided the impound garage, reclaimed our ride, kidnapped the bitchy governor's daughter and used her as a hostage to get past the hive ant's air defences. These fuckers are gonna pay. Yeah, they're actually, gonna get, they're actually gonna get their fucking what? shit cut and kicked in. They already got their shit kicked in before. They're gonna get it even harder this time. Big E and Malkador had me restricted to the emperor's wing of the palace for my breakout stunt. They think I should have handled that better and just requested a pickup. I say fuck that. They impounded an imperial ambassador's vehicle. They told me that was going to be used to sanction the Hive and force the governor's family from power. The bitch I took hostage went livid, even calling the Emperor an upstart. It was funny as hell. Since her family has been stripped of their titles, she is now a menial. She is in charge of cleaning the sunny dog's boots. She yelled that it was beneath her. I offered to have her thrown out of the palace and left to fend for herself. She relented. I almost feel bad for them, but like, yeah. seriously, what were this you thinking? Boy, this boy, but, but the... Anon seems to like get like really big for his boots. Oh yeah, he's... well like come on here. Who wouldn't if like, you're like by the Emperor's side? Serious. Like you are. That's just that's just inevitable. Yeah. Um. Although I do think the Emperor will dispose of him whenever he's out of yes. Yes, for him. I, yeah. I think he definitely. Yeah. I don't think he's gonna survive. Yeah. The southernmost hive got a huge change in leadership. The governor's family was dragged back to the palace in chains. The morons tried to secede after the news of their demotion went out. The other houses pounced on them before the army could even muster. I managed to get the miners out of the house sparred. The governor's wife was shacking up with some rogue traitor and got off in exchange for leaving with him. The rest were executed by firing squad after trial. Before a governor died, he accused me of stealing his daughter to rob her of her virtue. I told him his daughter had none to steal. <laughs> <laughs> she was pissed at that comment. I was really sick of her shit, so I kicked her out to the streets. Like, I know I know it must be difficult. Like, you know, the boy is, like, you know, he's governor of a planet. It's a very big job and all that. But you need to remember, the emperor's king of kings. Mm. Like, you know, you may be a king, but you've got a king above you. You know what I mean? Um, no, you have someone above you, you have someone above you, and there's probably more above you. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it's very easy to think, oh, no, it's sweet. Don't worry yeah. about it. It's like, no, this ends badly yeah. for everyone involved. Like, this is how you get Death Corps of Krieg. <laughs> Do you want Death Corpse Clay? Because that's how you get Death Corpse Clay, right? As two sunny dogs started to drag her away, she begged me for mercy. Mercy, bitch? I already offered you a job before. It was an easy one too. I told her I would give her one chance. She would shut the fuck up, do her duties as a menial, and I would ensure she get a room, board, 
protection, and I would pay her dowry to marry her off to your frontier world noble. It was her best bet and she knew it. Frontier world nobles were almost always new bloods and would be eager to get proper lineages to intermarry. Honestly, she should just be happy she doesn't get turned into a servitor. <laughs> like, let's be serious. I'm sorry, just don't be... Like, that's what happens, though. Yeah. Just don't get turned into a servitor. Even if from disgraced houses. I was being crazy generous. If she started anything, she was to be thrown to the streets. She could become some ganger tribe's new toy or something. Literally the next day, two sunny dogs dragged her to me. She tried to seduce Rassets into killing me. Um, how what about the fuck? no? <laughs> what a dumb bitch. Yeah. I was trying to be nice. I had her beaten and tossed out. Based. <laughs> yeah. Be honest with you, I think that's going to come back to bite him, though. It'll yeah. be like the McDonald's. I yeah, think. I think they're um, going to come back to bite as him. As you said, as well. he is getting very big for his bits. And, like, you know, these people do hold a lot of sway and could yeah. get him into bother down yeah. the road. Angron told me I should have her killed. If she somehow tries anything again, I will. Her two siblings were really young. I was having them taken care of. They would be married off to Frontier Worlds. Emps was making me pay for their upkeep, but I wasn't going to have kids killed if I could avoid it. One was a six-year-old boy and the other an eleven-year-old girl. They were sweet. I hired a small staff to watch the kids until we can marry them off. Angron has offered to text the boy to see if he can become an Astartes. I think that's supposed to be text. It should be. It? Why the fuck would Angron be texting him? Texting a six-year-old going, here mate, do you want to be an Astartes? <laughs> Absolutely. Angron, LOL. Angron, LMFAO. <laughs> Angron nonce edition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's test. So it is. I told him I would allow it if he passed and was interested. The boy was all for it. Mal insisted on screening him first. The girl is sweet but clearly scared by the death of her family and change in status. We've tried to make her feel as safe as possible. Angron is taken to watching her during the night shift. It is fucking nonce edition. Angron's watching the 11 <laughs> no, year old. Honestly, I, I'm really happy for Angron in this universe because, to be honest with you, he's possibly the saddest character out of um, 40k, I think. Yeah. Like in the 40k universe. Because, honestly, he should have <laughs> just. saying yes if I know anything. <laughs> but, honestly, he should have just died on that planet. You know what I mean? Um, in the actual official, official universe. Official lore, yeah. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but today's sponsor is brought to you by Neckbeardia's 3D printed models. Go ahead and check out the eBay store down below. We have tons and tons of really cool looking models. We've got it all from orcs, dwarves, the lizards and fish people. And yes, most of the sets you can get some big bitty bitches in with them. <laughs> and honestly, they're our biggest sellers. Yeah, by far. Yeah. All the models are printed and processed by us and it is by far the best way to help us out to do what we do. So go ahead and check them out below and just just look at this lizard lady with titties. She got big titties. <laughs> look at the titties! <laughs> the new governor of the hive sent me a gift basket. I sent a thank you card. What? Fresh fruit is expensive as fuck on Terra. The boy passed both the gene and mental tests. He's going to be made a son of Angron. I don't know if turning them into a world leader is ideal. Oh wait, what were they called at this point? I don't think they were called Warhounds. They didn't get the name world leader to the leader. The place day is Warhounds. He's been handed over to the Gene Smiths for processing. Our wait for Fulgrim and the Khan has been delayed again. Another world was attacked on their route. An orc wah <laughs> wah <laughs> has assaulted a forge world. They're helping out. This is clearly bullshit, but who's? Emps is pissed, but resigned. A rejoining the crusade is delayed for now. Ferris made me a power sword. I'm not allowed to use it right now, but it looks badass on my wall. Sahal was still kicking my ass. I mean, training me to fight. Raza and his boys have asked me to get them some combat. They were hoping we would be out in the crusade by now. I asked Mal and Emps if there was anywhere they could fight on Terra. I signed them up to assist on a routine underhive purge. This time, it went smoothly. Likely, because I wasn't involved. I was asked to save the Emps more time and rep him at more balls and feasts. Those went way better. Most of the Terran nobles seem like okay people, if a bit snobbish. But maybe I'm just a bit plebish? Whatever, those went well. I've seemed to earn brownie points for saving the kids. Many seemed outright shocked when I went out of the way to help them. There was a small snag when one of the sunny dogs got to know a noble's mistress a bit too well. <laughs> A nobleman insisted he fight the Solar Ox Tripper in fisticuffs. The fat mad lad actually won. Hey, nice. <laughs> Give him credit. <laughs> the, 
The solar wasn't even mad and bought him a drink. I talked more to this guy. His name is Hirio Kirstam. He's a big guy, like really big. He hits like a truck though. We took him to a few more parties and left on great terms. After we return from our next tour in the crusade, he wants to spar with the sunny dogs. I hope to see more of him. I also met with the head of House MacDonald, Lord Ronald, <laughs> whatever huge number. <laughs> <laughs> did you really have to call him? Yeah, he kind of had to call him Ronald, didn't he? He apologised for his various cousins' attempts at angering me. We talked for a bit. I danced with one of his lady cousins and we parted on decent terms. I hope that settles that. Though I think Hero is sleeping with his wife. <laughs> I had to attend some events and shake hands, but things were pretty slow. A few houses have offered me marriage requests or followers. Mal told me to wait on getting married. Biggie might need me to marry to help us with the world or pocket empire. A few houses sent me staff, like a scribe, a few maids and butlers, etc. House MacDonald sent me a young boy as a page slash ward to act as my errand boy. His name is Duran, funnily enough. If any of you guys know what that reference is, please let us know. I have no idea. He's barely ten. I try and make him feel welcome. Duran mostly just runs his water during training and carries low-level missives. My staff have been settling in. The scribe was bored out of his mind. I got him to work helping with some minor busy work for the palace. Two of the sunny dogs got in a fight over one of the new maids. I can tell she's going to be trouble. Duran has taken well to things. Angrom took him on the range a few times. Sahal and Razitz are still kicking my ass each day, but at least I can fight a bit. Ems has been painting lately. It's damn amazing. Mostly random murals in the palace. He changes his appearance as to avoid attention, but still draws a bit of the crowd. Mal has been forced to pick up the slack, but Emperor needed a break. Ems seems to be more relaxed lately. I actually find him wrestling with Angron in the sparring area a few times. Ferris seems to be warming up to people more. A bit. He at least talks more? Gulliman sent me a letter. Just a summary of his journey in the Crusade. I actually quite like this idea with Gulliman sending letters because he's supposed to be like an analogue to Caesar. Yeah. And Caesar's very famous for his letters because yeah. a lot of that's actually still preserved. Yeah. I actually like that. That's a nice wee touch. Yeah. I don't know if that's intended or not, but I think it's a good touch. The Warhound group being sent to join Angron is now on its way. The problem made is at it again. She's been teasing everyone. Even Durin who she made blush like a rose. The sunny dogs seem to have accepted she isn't anyone's girl. As long as it doesn't cause an issue, I don't care if they treat her as a regiment bike, as long as everyone is consenting. It's a bit weird to me, but the Imperium is a lot more open and it's none of my concern. Durin hands me a note as I'm working on a test Malkador has me working on. I sent him off to complete his runs. The note is from Razitz. Seems like someone tried to sneak into my room. He's asked me to handle it personally. I finished the test real quick, as I was almost done. I checked the charge on my last pistol on the way. You can never be too careful. Someone breaking into my room might be a threat, even with guards. As I walk to my suite, I see a few dogs holding watch. They nod to me as I pass. I offer one in return. Raza is seated on my couch. A squad of dogs have a woman in servant robes strapped to a chair. This must be the person they caught. What's the situation, Razitz? He just walks up to me and coughs. She claims you invited her to your room? It seemed out of your usual habits. I didn't invite someone to my room. I draw my last pistol, but keep it at my side. I walk closer to the binded woman. I speak with a cold voice. Who hired you? How much were you offered to kill me? Anon, um, I don't... She starts panic yelling, almost in gibberish. Quiet! I yell. I would like to know who sent you. Both Razit and the woman go quiet. I, I was hoping you would take me as your personal maid. So you tried to break into my quarters? Likely story. You could have just sent me a request or approached me normally. I ain't falling for none of this bullshit. You don't break into your hopeful boss's home and ask for a job. Do you take me for a fool? But, but, but you took in Tisha. Who the fuck is Tisha? The problem maid? I didn't pick her. She was sent to me as a retainer as a noble gift. She just looks at me in confusion. This sounds like an infiltration of the Skrnashi cult, just saying. Why did you come here? I was wanting to... She gives me a weird look. To take me on as your personal maid? But I have mates. If you wanted me to hire you, you could have gone through the proper channels. She tilts her head to the side a bit and has an even more confused look. You know, a personal maid? Stop talking in circles! What need would I have for a personal maid? 
I'm getting a bit upset now. Tisha said you could really use one, that you would be really eager to have me. She seems on the verge of tears. I'm so fucking lost right now. <laughs> of course you are. Virgin. <laughs> <laughs> Raza is chuckling to himself. The sunny dogs are clearly holding their own laughter. Then it hits me like a truck gun. I'm going to have Tisha shot. <laughs> they start laughing like a madman while the poor girl starts having a breakdown. I didn't call this out on Vox for a reason, Anon. I want her in front of a firing squad. Tisha was just trying to look out for you. Calm down. She sent someone to break into my suite. Because she saw you were stressed and wanted to help you vent after you shot her down. Like, honestly, Tisha just wants you to get your dick sucked, yeah. mate. That's pretty much what it comes yeah. down to. I don't recall her ever trying to hook up with me. You wouldn't. I pause. I mean, the problem made teases everyone. Me included. I wouldn't just ask her to stop. She would so, no issue. This was just insane though. The poor servant tricked into breaking in was in tears thinking she was going to die. I'm hoping to sweep this under the rug. Call Tisha here. I want to talk with her. I calm the servant girl down and have the dogs untie her with a silent hand order to shoot her with any sudden movements towards me. The problem made is brought in. She was smug until she saw the servant girl with clear signs of crying. I told her the situation and asked why she would do this. Because you need to get laid, my lord. <laughs> Excuse me? What's wrong? I thought she was your type. I'm usually good at guessing what men are into. Too forward? The fuck is wrong with this thought? <laughs> you had her break into my suite. You didn't react well to my flirting and advances. I thought it was a too open thing. So you had her break in to seduce me because you thought I needed to get laid? That's about it. Sarah was looking to get a raise. You needed a mistress. What's the issue? I slapped her. She hit the ground hard. You're fired. I turned towards Razitz. Get her away from my sight. The dogs drag her away to toss her ass back to the house that sent her. I would have her kicked to the streets, but she was a gift servant. I would let them handle it. Can I have her job? Fuck it. You're hard. If you never bring this up again. Honestly, I think there's something weird going on here, especially with them making up with House McDonald. Yeah. I think this could be kind of fishy. Now, yeah, okay, Anon definitely does need his dick sucked. However, this could be a very, you know, I think there could be some scheming going on. So, guys, what do you think is going to happen with the story if it continues? If it continues? I really hope it does continue because I've, I've really grown to really love like it a lot. It. So, I have, it kind of is like, be honest with you, it is like the McDonald's of 40k. You yeah. know, it's kind of bad for you, but it's actually really good at the same yeah. time. Yeah. And it's it's got that comedic part and it's a different tone than what we're used to when it comes to 40k. So, it's actually quite enjoyable yeah. for me. Yeah. However, um, as I say, the last part was on the 28th of May and. Uh, you haven't know, got like anything since so it's, it's august at the time of i know this. i remember seeing in one of the threads where he has a lot of stuff on like work and yeah. family or whatever but he said if he if he knows that he can't continue it he's gonna ask there's a few people lined up that he's gonna ask to continue it we'll he's see, gonna give them out, he's gonna tell them like the what gist of what he is planning, is planning and then they can continue on but there's been none of that since like haven't seen anything so God yeah. knows what's going to happen. Like, we don't know what's going to happen. This story might end here completely. Or, or we'll might make continue. it another part in a year. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I just hope it doesn't end up in the All Guardsman Party state of limbo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and continuous. Is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? When are we going to get the next yeah. part? Yeah. Are we going to get the next part? We are going to be starting another multi-part soon. Probably next week. And yeah, we're going to be continue on with Garp Camp. So if you're... If, if you haven't watch the videos of LARP Camp go watch, watch them it. they're so good this is the last arc that we're going to be going into yeah because um, all the threads Each, are ex- yeah they can stand alone so, so this go is like and a- read them or go and read them go and <laughs> watch them now <laughs> yeah um, and then you'll be up to date by the time we do the third part so hope you guys enjoy that anyway yeah um, look sorry about this you know it's not the best of endings for the night but big sad I know big sad big like, sad she's mad <laughs> Megan please don't please don't <laughs> absolute thoughtery <laughs> <laughs> like, hope you guys enjoy talk to you guys later bye all 